uh, the path, though, of it is it's a catecholamine producing tumor. It arises in the adrenal medulla. Um, it usually affects just one gland, although it can be bilateral and sometimes it could be abdominal. It's usually benign, but 10% of them are malignant. The tumor produces, stores, and releases epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, so the excessive epinephrine and norepinephrine stimulates analergic receptors, which give side effects that are um, similar to sympathetic autonomic nervous system simulation. Please don't read to me. What? Please don't read to me. <laughs> anyway, um, they don't know what causes it. Um, but it does occur with some inherited diseases like neurofibromatosis and multiple endocrine neoplastic diseases. Um, it's slightly more in females and it can occur at any time, but it's more commonly at 40 to 60 years of age. Um, the signs and symptoms is um, the hallmark is hypertension. Um, and you're going to have intermittent hypertension or you could have hypertensive crisis. Um, they vary in time. It could be a few minutes to several hours. Um, so they're going to have headaches, palpitation, profuse um, sweating, uh, flushing, apprehension. They're going to feel doom. Um, they could have uh, chest pain and abdominal pain. Um, and they can have nausea and vomiting. Puke. Awesome bag, huh? <laughs> um, they can have increase in abdominal pressure and defecation. Um, it didn't say, but I'm going to assume that's because of the tumor itself. Um, you do not want to palpate the abdomen um, because this can actually stimulate the tumor and it can provoke a hypertensive crisis. Um, the people also sometimes report heat intolerance, weight loss, and tremors. We're going to diagnose this by doing some labs. Uh, the number one thing is a 24-hour urine, and it is looking for BMA, which is vanillin... We can't say it. Vanillic acid. Say it yeah, yeah, we can't say any of this. Um, it's a product of the catecholamine production and metronephrine, and then, of course, the catecholamines. Those would all be increased in the 24-hour urine. Um, other tests that they could do is a uh, clonidine suppression test. Um, if the 24-hour urine was um, not really clear, um, and rarely they'll do a, simulate, a stimulation test. Um, you could do MRI and CTs to see exactly where the adrenal tumor is located. And if they find one, they're going to also do a CT elsewhere to see if there are um, chest or abdominal tumors. Um, the main thing that they're going to do to treat it is surgery. That is like the gold standard. Um, and it's going to involve one or both adrenal glands, depending on the patient, whether they have it in one or two. Um, after the surgery, your main thing is to make sure that they have tissue perfusion. Um, and uh, you're going to check for hypertensive crisis. Um, since they're taking out that gland, um, you may have high uh, blood pressure because they've stimulated it while they actually went in and took it out or you can have low because you're rebounding because you're then used to having really high um, hormonal levels and now they're gone so you have to see which is your patient is going to manifest um, like I said hypertension um, is the hallmark of the disease and it's the most common serious complication after surgery so you're going to monitor the blood pressure um, you're going to reduce any sort of stressors, so that might mean you have to kick out family. Um, you don't want them to smoke or have caffeine because that's going to increase uh, their blood pressure. Um, and you don't want them to change position suddenly. Um, they said that that would increase um, hypertension, but also, I mean, if they have low blood pressure, um, you don't want them to pass out. Um, and once again, post-surgically, you do not want to palpate the abdomen. Um, you want to offer a diet rich in calories, vitamins, and minerals, and you want to call, uh, give them a calm, restful environment, um, especially if the patient has a headache if they're in crisis at the time. Um, they said that the blood pressure can be stabilized, stabilized using um, analgergic blocking agents, which makes sense because the tumor itself 
stimulates the analgesic, analgesic, oh. <laughs> adrenergic, adrenergic, thank you, um, receptors. Um, and you want to make sure that they're properly hydrated. Uh, one of the other complications that can happen is shock. Um, if they're having surgery, they're going to have a chance for hemorrhage. Um, so that's something you really want to keep an eye on. Um, and after the surgery, um, they're going to go to ICU. They're not going to come back to med surge. And you're going to assess um, every 15 minutes um, for shock due to um, volume and also insufficient glucose replacement. replacement. Um, you're going to monitor the central venous pressure and uh, pulmonary wedge pressure. Okay. Going, let's stop because we're you're not having class on Wednesday, so we may go a little bit over. Okay, is that a fair trade-off? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me just kind of this releases what catecholamines. catecholamines. Mm -hmm. What else releases catecholamines? Which is what fight or flight. Fight or flight. So in this case, you've got an exaggerated fight or flight, okay? So when you have fight or flight, you're nervous and your heart's pounding, okay? Your blood pressure goes up. So that's what's going on here is you've got an exaggerated fight or flight, okay? So they, you know, they can treat the symptoms. All those drugs you're going to just kind of treat the symptoms. To, you have to take the tumor out to actually get rid of the things. Usually, uh, they're not going to do any kind of stimulation test because you don't want to stimulate catecholamine. Okay. Said rarely. rarely, but okay. So just a couple of things. You don't want to even before surgery. You don't want to rub that thing because it'll stimulate uh, a, a fire fly so, And also, when you're preparing them for surgery, you want to keep the place very quiet and dark because what happens if you you know you've got what happens if somebody drops a tray? Okay. Well, you may just go. Oh, it was just a tray. They go, and then they can't come down from it. Okay, so you can put them in a crisis. Okay. Okay. Next. 